So there's a little bit of a ruckus in the Linux communities this last week because Linus Torvalds removed a list of kernel maintainers that are Russian. Now, I think people are losing their effing minds over this and they don't understand the consequences of U.S. sanctions and why we have U.S. sanctions. Now, I'm not a big fan of sanctions, I must admit, and I don't know if I would even have sanctions if I were president. I think they're pretty ridiculous, pretty reductive, but this would be a really good argument for one if there ever was an argument to have sanctions against other countries. Now, there's a lot of trolls out there who are sitting there crying because, well, some of these maintainers got removed from the list, right? Okay. Yeah, do they even know, like, who those maintainers are? Who they worked for? Anything? Do they know anything about them, or are they just crying? Yeah, cry me a river. I guess they forgot about Russia's aggression into Ukraine, right? Like, I'm of Polish descent. I actually have Polish relatives. And I can tell you that Poland is next if Russia wins in Ukraine. If they prevail in Ukraine, Poland is next. Those are my relatives. I know that. There's no ambiguity here. If you know anything about Polish history, you'll know there's a long, long history of Russia invading Poland. It dates back hundreds of years. So, with this being said, I find it really funny, like all these ultra right wingers are just losing their mind in the last few years where all of a sudden the Kremlin's the good guy, all of a sudden Putin is the good guy, and somehow in their warped mind, Zelensky and the Ukrainian government are the bad guys. Well, I, you might want to hang on to that because I'm going to tell you a story about how Ukraine is not the bad guys. I actually know a little bit about this region, unlike Candace Owens, unlike some of these right-wing pundits who are basically Russian assets from what I can ascertain. But I'm going to take them down like full stop, right? One thing that I want to establish right here is I know Trump would allow Putin to be sitting in Kyiv right now. I know that. This is why I'm voting for Kamala Harris. So I went on my afternoon jog and something just kind of stuck out at me that I didn't really deliver my message like I'd wanted. So I just, uh, I just want to just kind of drive this point home. I don't think that Donald John Trump will do anything for the Ukrainian people. I don't think that he will be their ally, and I don't think he will stand up to Vladimir Putin. There is no evidence of such a thing. And not even in his record, his track record, would he be willing to concede that. So I'm going with Kamala Harris on this, and I know that, you know, the idea of Trump just giving Vladimir Putin Ukraine is considered like a Kamala Harris talking point, but the fact of the matter is, I think it's actually true. I think there's a fair amount of evidence that that's true. The other thing that I want to just kind of mention and clear the air here is just a simple fact that I don't personally believe that the devs should necessarily be on trial here. And unfortunately, because of this sanction, they kind of are. And I feel bad about that. I do, because you know what? I'll bet you any one of those devs, if I sat down there and had a cup of coffee with them, I'd hit it off fabulously with any one of those people. I have no doubt in my mind. So I'm not hating on them. I'm. It's not nothing personal against them. It's against the Kremlin. And I think they probably hate the Kremlin, Probably every bit as much as I do, maybe even more. Anyway, back to the whole kernel thing, right? I think it's a smart policy, honestly. Remove those Russian developers, and honestly, I'm actually kind of surprised they haven't done it yet. I have to be perfectly honest. I kind of thought they would. I 
literally thought they would have already removed them like a year ago. I'm kind of baffled they have it. And it's kind of funny, Torvalds is quoting saying, it's entirely clear why the change was made. It's not getting reverted. If you haven't heard of Russian sanctions yet, you should try reading the news sometime. No kidding. My question is, did the Linux Foundation or Kernel whatever have to wait for sanctions? Because I don't think they did, honestly. I don't think they had to wait one minute for for any kind of sanctions in order to basically block the contributions of Russian developers. I mean, Putin is an autocrat and he gets what he wants and his explicit stated goal is to restore the former Soviet Union or at least die trying, right? Now, you don't think that if he gets what he wants, he couldn't just pressure some devs to write like some malicious code or something. At least this is what my initial thought was, right? And one of the things that I didn't realize is that once a lot of the maintainers are being blocked, they're developers associated with a Bakayal Electronics. It's a Russian company behind like various MIPS and ARM based processors that are making domestic Russian CPUs. And the reason why there is this sanction against them is just simple. Those CPUs will wind up in, you know, Russian military weapons. And so in order to prevent that from happening, they launch a sanction. Actually, I think this is way more understandable and it makes sense. You're not going to allow your adversary to have an advantage when you can snap your fingers and give them a massive disadvantage. It's not that they can't develop ARM based processors. It's that they can't sell to the international market. I don't see the harm in that. I honestly don't, but there's probably some people who do. And then, you know, Linus Torvalds, he says, as for me, sending a revert patch please use whatever mush you call brains i'm finished do you think i'd be supporting russian aggression yeah torvalds gets it many of these r rabid right-wing nut jobs don't get it that's the problem linus gets it though there's a reason why he's the goat it's because he knows how to think unlike a lot of these you know numbskulls but here's the thing Okay, I'm a Christian. Now I'm going to talk to you about my Russian mom. Being a Christian, I'll tell you, you often find that you have many moms and dads. This is just a fact of life. You have many moms and dads. Well, let me tell you about my Russian mom. I lived with this Russian family when I was in college and she became mom. My Russian mom was on the run from the KGB all throughout her childhood mom was an orthodox christian her dad was a jew that was like a bad combination in the old former soviet union during the cold war they were constantly on the run like every like uh six to 18 months or something they had to go move to a new place a new town and why why would you, I mean, maybe because they would put their parents in jail. Is that the big deal? Or may, might find them? No, it wasn't that. Because the KGB liked to rip kids out of Christian homes and put them in orphanages. That's what they like to do. That is their modus operandi. It's still alive today. So when my Russian mom was a teenager, she moved to Ukraine. And she went to high school there. And that was where she could kind of breathe a little bit because the Ukrainians didn't allow the KGB just to go after people because they were Christian. And I have to say, she bounces between Ukraine and the United States today. Ukraine is very, very close to her heart. She runs an orphanage there and many other things. But... The thing is, is remember all those Russian refugees? The majority of them came out of Ukraine or Estonia. 
they actually absorbed those people. They took them in. They didn't persecute them. Ukraine is just different on a different level. And you know what? Remember when I said that the KGB is still doing this? Let me tell you, a year and a half ago, KGB picked up this old man who's preaching the gospel in Russia. He was incarcerated. And you remember when Brittany Grimer was released in that prison swap? So was he. It was during that prison swap that he was released. They're still doing the same thing. Vladimir Putin was the leader of the KGB. So don't tell me that these aren't bad people, that they're not bad hombres. They obviously are. So I think the choice is clear. We have two paths we could go. We could turn a blind eye to that. We could say, oh, all those millions of Christians that Ukraine absorbed during the Cold War, that doesn't count for anything. We could say that, but I'm hoping we won't. I know I won't. So what's it going to be for you? And I just want to be clear. Donald Trump would literally give you Ukraine to Russia. There's no question that's exactly what he would do. I'm not interested in that conversation.